In this video, I'm sharing some low cost upgrades to get high performance results from your Nomad 883. No backlash, more torque, chip evacuation, and dust protection. Stick around. I originally purchased my Nomad 883 back in 2016, which at this point seems like forever ago. I've since learned a lot, the community has grown, and we even have news of the new and improved model on the horizon. For some users, that may be the way to go, but for others, you may want to see how you can get more from your existing investment. This video is going to cover some of the challenges with the Nomad and a few low-cost upgrades that can get you dialed back into getting great performance from the machine. For starters, backlash, or rather anti-backlash. By definition, backlash is the amount of axial play or slack within a linear drive system. On the Nomad, the drive system for all access uses TR8x8x4 lead screws. Most vendors will just call them TR8x8. This means it has an 8mm diameter with 4 threads at an 8mm pitch. If we model this in Fusion 360, it's easy to see how a single thread at 8mm pitch leaves lots of room for additional threads. Adding 2, 3, and then 4 threads fills up the screw. This is important to note as for this system, to move the gantry and build platform around it needs to interface with these lead screws. And to do so, it employs anti-backlash nuts. Backlash in the Nomad usually comes from the lead screws, and more specifically, the slack between the threads of the lead screw and the lead screw nut. To help compensate for the gap, Delrin anti-backlash nuts are used. The basic design is two nuts with a compression spring between them to force the nuts away from each other, expanding the nuts to fill the thread tolerance basically preloading the mechanical thread engagement. Each axis on the machine is mounted to one side of that spring-loaded anti-backlash nut, and since there's some tolerance or slack that's being taken up by the spring, that play or backlash can be felt if you apply more axial force than the spring is exerting. Over time, the Delrin can wear and the springs can lose their strength. As this occurs, more slack will be introduced into each axis. Excessive backlash can cause lots of bad things, all of which are exacerbated by how hard you're driving your machine. Cutting forces, feeds, speeds, and material. If you're cutting softwood, foam, even acrylic, you'll likely never notice as the anti-backlash nuts are working just fine. But as you begin to push your machine, do high-speed milling on metals, you'll quickly see the problems compound. Chatter, vibration, surface quality, and dimensional accuracy. Measuring the backlash on my Nomad measured almost 8 thousandths per axis. And while the backlash only comes into play at certain directions of travel, like when you're moving away from the preloaded edge, it's significant enough to cause all of these issues. Since these anti-backlash nuts are non-adjustable, we only have a few options. One, we can replace the anti-backlash nuts with higher tension springs. Two, we can preload the springs with more pressure. Or three, we can design an adjustable anti-backlash nut uh, that's compatible with the machine. In this video, we're gonna do all three, and then some. Upon removal of the stock Nomad anti-backlash springs, I noticed the longer spring was used for the Z than was used for the X and Y axis. Not sure if they changed them at some point, but the anti-backlash nuts with higher tension can be found directly from Carbide 3D or through my links below. The higher tension is going to give you more resistance to backlash and subsequently more cutting force. Additionally, when installing the anti-backlash nuts, I filled the backlash nuts with amber grease and then compressed the springs almost entirely to get as much preload pressure as possible on the threads. Granted, this will increase the wear of the Delrin and add some loss of torque on the axis due to the increased rotational friction, but these NEMA 17 steppers have enough torque to spare. By just increasing the preload pressure on the stock anti-backlash nuts, the backlash is down to one thousandths of an inch. This alone will improve the accuracy and significantly reduce chatter and mechanical vibration in the machine. To take it one step further, while I had the machine apart, I made note of the anti-backlash nut pocket dimensions milled into each axis. For those dimensions, I developed two adjustable backlash nut designs. These designs will give you more options when the preload strategy wears out. Both designs will be milled from Delrin and provide a set screw for adjustment of the thread torsion against the lead screw. The first design applies compression by way of an adjustable screw and nylon lock nut. The benefits of this design is it'll only contract within the dimensions of the milled pocket. The second design applies thread expansion by way of a grub screw and locking nut. Concerns about this design is that the grub is threaded in the Delrin and under worst case conditions the expansion may exceed the dimensions of the milled pocket. I have parts for both designs if you're interested in trying either of them out. Whichever option you choose, all of them are cheaper than a new machine or modifying it for ball screw upgrades. With backlash off the list for now, let's talk torque and power. 
The easiest modification for that is to move up in the motor family from the 42 blf 2 which is the 52 watt motor, which comes stock with the Nomad 883 Pro, to a 42 blf 3 which is a 78 watt motor. It's not a huge gain, but that little extra strength for higher chip loads without any changes to the electronics is a win. It's a direct replacement wire for wire, so it was easily spliced into the existing harness with no effort. The motor is about 8 millimeters taller, which requires an updated limit switch. In this case, I designed one in Fusion 360 and laser cut it from 3 millimeter acrylic. With that, I was good to go. The next upgrade was to add a dust cover to the motor drive and pulley. This helps to reduce the noise and dust accumulation in that area. It was modeled also in Fusion 360 and 3D printed on the TAS. The model incorporates a couple tabs which snap fit into place when pushed onto the spindle. It finishes off the machine and adds a bit of aesthetics while keeping things clean. You may also notice the air nozzle mounted on the spindle which is incorporating a small 12 volt pump and air line that's routed through the drag chain to help with chip clearing. All of these simple upgrades when coupled with good feeds and speeds can really up the game of your Nomad 883 and for me that's exactly what I was looking for. So with that let's take a look and listen to the upgraded Nomad 883 milling some 6061. <laughs> If you're interested in applying these upgrades to your machine, I'll provide affiliate links below in the parts I used as well as links to the models and parts I designed. With better machine performance and accuracy, I'll be milling out an aluminum build of the Arcado 3 body soon, so be sure to look out for that video in the near future. That's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the overview of several cost-effective performance upgrades. Um, they'll only take a few hours to install and significantly improve the performance of your machine while allowing you to take on more challenging projects with confidence. If you like this particular video and want to see more, give it a thumbs up because that's kind of how this system works. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell. It'll help keep you in the know on future updates. In the meantime, as always, be safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. That's really loud. Yeah, thanks. Took the restrictor plate off, give the Red Dragon a little more juice. But uh, let's keep that on the down low. This is not exactly street legal. <laughs>